Are you spending so much time in your Shopify store each day or week updating your products, your inventory, or your pricing, and you're thinking, there has got to be a better way to do this? Well, good news, there is, and it's actually with an app called StockSync, which lets you automatically update all of your inventory and you only have to set it up once. So in this video tutorial, we are going to go through how to set that up and exactly why you need StockSync for your Shopify store. Hi, I'm Elle McCann, owner of Curious Themes Web Development Studio in Nashville, Tennessee, and we have been Shopify experts for over five years now. I am so excited to announce that we have partnered with the StockSync app, which you can find in the Shopify app store, and I'll put a, a link below this video, to show you exactly how to set up an automated feed for your Shopify store that is going to automatically update your inventory and your products for you. So who would this app work for? So this actually works for anyone who's needing to connect with their supplier, their warehouse or point of sale system, or if you're drop shipping, any time that you're needing to update your information, especially for inventory and keep it all synced, as long as you can export a file format of that, then you can import it into stock sync and get everything automated for you and you only have to set it up one time and then let the rest be done for you in the app. So a huge, huge time saver. So as I mentioned before, we actually have partnered with the StockSync Shopify app to bring you this video series all about their app and how to set it up and integrate it with your Shopify store. So this is the first video in this series where we're gonna be talking about why you need StockSync for your Shopify store, as well as how to set up a feed. So the next three videos are gonna be coming out over the next few days. And as they come out, I will put the link below this video as well to link out to those videos so you can stay tuned. So we have a lot to go over, so we're gonna go ahead and hop into my Shopify store now, and let's go ahead and get started by setting up a feed. Okay, so we are in my Shopify store backend right now, and as you can see, I have no products that are currently added into my Shopify store. So we definitely want to get that fixed and go ahead and get the app added in. So I am going to go over here to apps in the left-hand menu and then to visit app store. So I actually already have the app here, but you'll find it in the app store by just clicking here. And then in the search box, we'll just start ty typing in stock sync and you can see it here. And then you'll just hit this big green get button and you can add it into your store. So we'll come back here to my store and I'm just gonna click on the app once it's been added in. And so you can see here, we don't have any feed set up. So that's what we're doing in this first video is setting up the feed. So I'm just gonna hit set up new feed here. And you have two different options. We can either add or remove new products or we can update the inventory. So since this is brand new, we're gonna to wanna to start over here first. And you can see here the different credit system that they have. So they have some credits that they give you as soon as you first start off and it costs a credit to add or remove a product. You can click right here and purchase more credits so you can do it individually if you know you wanna continually just do a certain amount of credits or if you're wanting to use this app to constantly update your products and keep everything synced, then you'll definitely wanna look into doing the monthly subscription so that way you're not gonna run out of credits and it's all going to work for you. So they have different prices based on how many products you need to be adding in and so that's gonna work with you a little bit better than going in and constantly doing the credit if you're wanting to really continue to use this. So I'm gonna just click on this stock sync logo to head back and I'm gonna hit set up new feed again and add product. So you can see here they have a few different templates from other suppliers. Now you may not see your supplier here 
and you can go ahead and just add in your file. As long as you have an export version of it, you can add it in here. You don't have to go with one of these suppliers. However, if you are using this supplier, you can go ahead and use their template, which really helps as well. So I'm just gonna hit start new. And now we're going to go in and actually update our stuff. So for this connection method, I'm gonna choose this upload file, but if you click on this, you can see there are a lot of different options of how you can actually pull in the products. You can either have the download link, FTP, Dropbox, but we're gonna keep this at upload file. There's also a lot of different file formats again. So it's really gonna be based on how your supplier is giving you the information. So I have mine in a CSV file. And so CSV is a comma separated file. So you can choose here how you want that column separator to be. So because I am doing a CSV file, it's gonna be a comma. You'll wanna make sure to open your file before you go through this process and know exactly what your column separator is just so you can make sure you get it right the first time. And then if your first row is a header, so describing what the different columns are about, you're gonna wanna make sure to click this so that way it, it skips that and it doesn't import that into your store. Okay, so that's all of the fields that we need to set up here. So I'm just gonna hit next in this bottom right-hand corner. So now we just need to go in and make sure that everything is going to sync up with the uploaded file that we just set up. So this first one is SKU. So I'm gonna go into my Excel spreadsheet now and I am going to copy the header for the SKU. So it's gonna be right here, a variant SKU. I'm just gonna copy that. And so we're just wanting to enter the column name or the index. So I'm gonna just put that in there. And next is the variant group. So we do have products that have multiple colors. So you can see here these sunglasses are in a few different colors here. So we wanna make sure that it groups it as one product and we don't want it as individual ones. So we can actually come in, I'm gonna copy this handle and that's what's gonna group it together. So I'm gonna paste in handle here. And it's just prompting us that we need to add in additional fields for the variant options, which we'll do in just a second. And then next we have product title. So I'm gonna come back to my Excel spreadsheet and the product title is just gonna be title here. So I'm copying these top fields just to make sure that it syncs it up. Next we have price, which is gonna be right here, this variant price. Okay, and then I'm gonna have add field. So it's saying here we need to do a variant option. So I'm gonna select the store field here and I'm gonna choose variant option one. And so variant option one, if we come back to my spreadsheet, it's gonna be color is the, the option. So I'm gonna just come in here, copy option name, paste it in there. And then I'm gonna make the title be color. Okay, and let's add a few more fields. So I'm gonna add one now for description. Gonna again, select here and hit description. Go back to my spreadsheet and we want this to be this body. Okay, and then let's see what other ones we may want to add in. So we can also choose, there's a variety here that you can choose. I'm gonna say product type and come back and it's gonna be type. The vendor in this case is all gonna be the same, so we don't have to add that in. However, you could add in that option. And let's go in and add product image. Okay. And let's do one more for quantity. And I think this will be the last one for us to do, so quantity and come back and it's going to be this variant inventory quantity for us and i'm going to paste it in there so now we've got all of our fields added in we have our message up here which we did of adding the variant option and so now i'm going to hit next 
and it said about the settings have now been updated. So this is the last area, which is now the advanced settings that we can do. So you can choose if you want to track the inventory or some other settings here that you can go through. So I'm gonna choose to let it shop, have Shopify track the inventory so that we can make sure everything is synced up. And it also shows here that all newly imported products are gonna be tagged with newly imported. So that sounds great and we're gonna hit done. So now you can see that the feed is set up here and the last step is just uploading that file. So I'm gonna click on upload file now and it says here about do you want to process automatically after upload and yes i do want to do that and i'm going to upload the file here and select it so you can see now that it is processing that and it does say to keep the window open until it is complete and so now we have gotten that uploaded so now we see that it is importing the products now to our store. So if we head back to our Shopify store, we can see here that we do have the products that are added in with their names, the pictures, inventory, as well as the type. And we can go into each of these and just double check all of that. So in the next video, we're going to go over how to use guided field mapping to update your existing products and have that automatically updating for you or to add in additional products as well. And then on our third and fourth videos, we're gonna be going over more of the automated features like setting up your quantity and pricing and filtering your feed. So make sure to stay tuned.